Alright, now it looks like we are on the correct wires for the cam and the crank. So the pattern is 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. So this is 720 of the crank, that makes sense. It's two sync notches per revolution, a double and a single. And the spark is occurring at the sync notches. Now my question is, why do we see this when the other coil is dead? That's unless the spark's occurring twice as often on one coil. But either way, this looks like a bad engine computer. Very interesting case study. All right, so we need some known good cam, crank, and ignition data. So my friend stopped by here, and his 2009 Subaru Forester has 270,000 miles on it. It runs just fine, so we know the data is, um, you know, this is what we need to scope to compare it to the non-running Forester. So I want four channels right now. I have two channels on the ignition coil trigger wires. So the top channel is on the top wire, and this is an OEM Subaru coil. It has been replaced once, and the little diagram actually shows the top coil is cylinders 1 and 2, and the bottom coil is cylinders 3 and 4. So that's interesting. Um, so the top wire must control coil number, you know, the top coil. So anyways, channels 1 and 2 are on the trigger wires. Channel 3 is on the crankshaft position sensor and channel 4 is on the camshaft position sensor so let's fire it up and see what we get all right scope is rolling Alright, so next week we're back at the shop with the uh, 2009 Subaru Forester with the weird spark situation. Now, over the weekend I got known good waveforms off of my friend's 2009 Forester. And I just want to give a huge shout out to John Thornton. He's a brilliant diagnostician, mobile diagnostician in the Chicago area. He's also a world-class trainer. I've taken a few of his seminars. Um, probably my favorite in terms of just case studies. He presents live case studies that he's done in the field and presents them at a very good pace. You don't get bored in his classes. And um, I reached out to him about this uh, Subaru. I also reached out to Keith. And John is the one who actually picked out that, hey, your crankshaft position signal is upside down. He had a known good waveform, and I'll show you right here, the known good waveform, the cam and the crank, when you overlay them, you can see those cam pulses coincide with those uh, sync notches in the crankshaft waveform. So this is the known good. Now if we look at the bad one, they coincide but the crank sensor is upside down it's inverted and this is why one of the coils it seems like is sparking too often and the other one is not sparking at all so what could the problem be first suspicion is a, either an aftermarket crankshaft position sensor or something went bad with the OEM so I dug in my stash and I found an OE crank sensor from a 2003 Subaru Outback right here. These are two cam sensors. This is the one we need. And um, we're going to try it out and see if the waveform gets flipped back around 
and if the car actually starts today, so place your bets now, this is going to be fun. Well, this is looking very promising. I spy the flying wings on this crankshaft position sensor. The shop failed to mention that they replaced it, and it looks like a Dorman unit. So let's pop in the OEM. Put the plug wires in the right place. So the top coil is 1, 2, the bottom coil is 3, 4. We'll scope everything, cam, crank, and the two trigger wires. I'm hoping this thing fires up today. All right, here we go. Here's the flying wings. Here's the OEM. It's even a little heavier. Let's pop this in, get the scope out. All right, OEM crank sensor is installed. I'm feeling lucky. Let's just crank this thing over, see what happens. Here's the key. <laughs> nice. All right, wrapping up this Subaru Forester. Fires right up, runs perfect. Um, but, looking at OBD2 data, look at the fuel trims. We're still running rich, it's taking away minus 30% on the short term. Why is that? Because this thing was cranked for half a year with fuel spraying and no spark. So it desperately needs an oil change even before the first test drive. I'll let the shop owner know, but that was a huge victory. Again, thank you to John Thornton for pointing out. If you don't have a known good waveform, you're still guessing. Even though the signals look good, it was flipped around because of an aftermarket crankshaft position sensor. Crazy stuff. Um, so that's where networking comes in handy and experience and data. Sharing data, sharing knowledge. I love it. This is what this field is all about. So hopefully this video helps someone else with similar issues. Again, say no to aftermarket parts when it comes to critical electrical or engine components. That's, you see it every day in this field. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.